Gavin Turner, you're very welcome to the podcast, Talking Sport with Stan. It's great to have you on, Gavin. Thank you, Sean. Thanks a million. Thanks for asking me to, to come on and have a chat. Oh, no problem at all. I said the, the goalkeepers were on my, uh, on my list in a while now, so it's a completely different angle and a completely different aspect of the game, and it's one that's not really delved into too often, but um, yes. there's a, a lot I'm curious about, so <laughs> I'll try not to dissect, dissect you too much throughout the chat, but... Um, yeah, uh, yeah. A few, few interesting it. takes. Yeah, of course, of course. So, how was all treating you at the minute? Good, um, good, Sean. No, I've been lucky. I've been working, working all the way through. I haven't been off work at any stage, so I've been, I've been at it as normal and uh, kind of enjoying the time at the weekends with family and stuff. So it's it's uh, yeah, been off a, school and, and off work. So yeah, has it slowed down yeah. for you a bit? You know, even though you've been working away, have you found you've your time, you've been able to manage your time a bit better or has it been busier? It's been quite busy at work, but it, but at home then, things have definitely slowed down and the pace of life has slowed down. Mm. You're getting to do far more things that uh, normally you'd be running and racing in and out the door doing loads of stuff, but you're kind of getting to do loads of uh, stuff at home now that you, yeah. you wouldn't have time to do or you, you'd be rushing at before. So, yeah, it's been good from that point of view. Yeah, that's one thing we've all kind of taken from it, isn't it? Just slowing down. Ah, yeah, like when you, uh, you know, I've heard you chatting to other lads about it, and yeah, it's definitely it's been good from that point of view. That the pace of life has slowed down, and a lot of the time we're, we're running and racing, and just mm. without even thinking about it, we're, we're kind of you know. So it's been a good time to relax with family, you know. No, it has absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, we'll go through the accolades. Um, Harding Cup in 1991 at the Irish University's Soccer. Before I move on, you just talk to me a bit about that, uh, Gavin, how that came about. Or... Well, the Harding Cup uh, is basically the, the freshers, the first year okay. in college, the equivalent of the Collingwood Cup. So um, it's for first years only. And I went to UCD and uh, I'd never played soccer before. I played soccer before, but um, only on tarmac and indoor and stuff like that. So I wanted to try out the soccer. And I went for the team and made the team. And we uh, had a very successful year that year. But one of the competitions is the, the InterVarsities competitions. And that was the Harding Cup that year. And it's played in Cork over a weekend. And I think we beat DCU in the quarterfinal, University College Galway in the semi-final. I think Cork themselves, UCC in the, in the final. So it's played over three days, if you, if you get that far. Yeah, brilliant. And it was a great, um, it was a brilliant weekend, and, and um, you know, great memories from that. And it's it's a lovely medal to have, you know. For sure. And then as as a UCD player beating DCU was a sweet one as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, still, absolutely. still, lots of rivalry there. Lots of rivalry, yeah. Trinity and UCC, and and that, then they used to have Jordanstown in those competitions as well. As from yeah. the bar, so it was, there, they yeah. were great. They were great competitions. Um, but that's a nice one to have an an early memory, you know. And what pushed you? What pushed you to go for the soccer that time? Was it was it just the, the fact of, you, of your position, and you said why not, or was there someone in particular that? Well, I'd, I'd always played for? soccer. I was watched soccer for, as a young lad, and I've been playing Gaelic all up through the the ages. I suppose I didn't have an opportunity to play um, soccer at an organised level. Yeah. Um. You know, being I was in. I went to school in Mells and I was a boarder there. So um, soccer, it was mainly Gaelic in, in, in Mells. And uh, I played Gaelic all up to the underage with Cullum Kill. So I never really had an opportunity to play soccer. And I just wanted to give it a try and see see what I, how would I get on with it, you know? Mm, it's always very enjoyable then when you break into a different code, isn't it? It's refreshing. Uh, it was brilliant. You know, I, I just went for the trials and said, I'd give it a go, see how it goes. Um, they picked a squad and they picked two teams off it. And... You know, we played in, in Leinster Senior League and the AUL League in Dublin. Brilliant. And then you had your university competitions as well. So it was, it was great. It was, um, and I played it right through. I played right through in, in UCD for um, five or six years. Even after I left college, I stayed there and played on and then played with the graduate club, Pegasus. So like all through the time I was playing football with Colm Cale and with Longford, I had another career gone on in, in Dublin playing soccer. So... <laughs> any, any local teams in the area together. here after you, was there? Pardon? Any local teams in the area here after you in the pre-season? <laughs> the off-season? Off no, no, no. Was UCL around that time? Um, 
I'm not sure. I, I, I played a little bit in the in the Paddy yeah. Shabby Cup and things like that locally and things. Yeah. You know, um, but no, we just I just I was happy enough to do that in in, in another part of the world and then playing with Gaelic down here. Yeah, nice escape too. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. great. It's great. Now probably overtrained and and did too much at times and you know training with soccer and training with the Gaelic and probably you know took its toll on the body. But mm-hmm. uh, anyway, I, I enjoyed it while I was at it. Yeah, just nobody that time to tell you to ease off. You know, it was the opposite, wasn't it? Keep <laughs> yeah. going, keep going. Keep going, yeah. Keep going. Great, great stuff. And then the, the famous yeah. O'Brien Cup um, has come up in a couple of chats with a few lads I've on. It's a great memory of mine as a, ch- a young player as well and as a child. Um, I'm sure a very memorable one for yourself as well. It was, yeah, it was. Um, Michael McCormick was over the team at the time. And we we kind of were having mixed results, and I remember before in those days the you played three rounds of the national league before Christmas, mm. and I think we we may may have won one of them, but we we lost we definitely lost two of them. I think we lost to Carlo, and we lost on a trip down to Waterford, which was memorable for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> and um, so Michael got us back training on Stephen's day, and we put a big effort in and said we try and get fit and try and you know, win a few games in the Burn Cup to try and get our league season going. And it just, it snowballed. Um, yeah, momentum. Uh, we got a bit of momentum. I think we beat a kind of a second string Kildare in, in the in the first game. Um, then Dublin came to town and with a kind of a two-thirds of their team. And that game went extra time. And we saw it out. Uh, Offaly again was a tough game at home in the semi-final and then we played Westmead in the final in, in Mullingar yeah you forget how tough for route it was like you know like it's that was they're all difficult games in their own right they were in those days you know teams generally played most of their um, yeah. their, their first team you know yeah they might have been trying out a few lads but in general you know teams would, would have brought strong strong squads to play in the O'Brien Cup and uh, yeah, we were we were pretty fit at the time. We we had got ourselves well prepared for it and, and well up for it. And by the time we played Westmead, then we were on a roll. And uh, it was a great occasion. Well, in Garlic, like, there was ten thousand people in the first week of February in in in, uh, in Cusack Park. Mm. And uh, it was a poor day weather wise. I remember. Uh, we got a good start. We got a, a goal earlier on. I think Niall got a, got a goal. I remember Enda Barden was. Harshly sent off. That's right. Yeah. He was captain that year too, wasn't he? Ender was captain. He didn't get to lift the, the trophy. Cahill Connery got to lift the, the trophy, but yeah. um, but anyway, we kept plugging. I think shortly after that, um, Jack Cooney was the West Mead manager. He was sent off as well. So, Barry Brady, <laughs> Barry Brady, kind of uh, got him sent off. <laughs> but even it up, and. Uh, <laughs> We kept that, and Trevor Smullen scored a late goal and did a somersault afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a few in the crowd did somersaults as well. <laughs> yeah, they did. It was it was a great. Yeah, that was time. great. Yeah, it was I great. The crowd on the field after it, and yeah, and the buzz around afterwards, and and go back to the Longford Arms, and maybe you're saying your dad brought you in there, and yeah, like many others, yeah. brilliant. It was a great occasion, and um, it was a little bit of time in the spotlight for us and first time it had been won in a while and you know so um we probably didn't realize it at the time but it it, it drove on uh, young lads it drove on the next generation you know yeah of course of course because we always remember those big days yeah yeah, yeah. so that, that was a great memory brilliant yeah and your land for senior championship in 2008 and as manager then you were over the 21s uh to win the club championship in 2015. So um, from the start, Gavin, I suppose, uh, coming up through the ranks, was, was football always big in your household? Was always big in your life as a young lad? Ah, it was, Sean, yeah. I mean, from from when I was young, I was I always had a ball in my hand and I was always outside. Mm. Be it, a, it didn't matter what type of a ball it was or whether you had a tennis racket or a badminton racket or <laughs> um, a football or a... You know, it didn't matter. Just I was outside playing, and um, um, the field at the, at the side of our house, and um, my dad put up goals there. Right, great job. He he um he used to mow it with, 
it was like a carpet, you know, it was like a lawn. It was mowed like a lawn. <laughs> and, uh, you want nothing more at that age, just perfect. <laughs> uh, it was perfect. It was, yeah. it was, it was, it was my, my Cork Park or... or <laughs> when, Wembley, you, when, or when are you cutting the pitch? <laughs> and, but I remember kids, like, my, bro, my, my brother was older than me, a good bit older than me, and my younger brother was a good bit younger than me, so... There was never really anyone my age to play with, but people used to arrive, and like kids in the area would arrive on bikes. And they come in and just join in and do an impromptu soccer match or a Gaelic match or whatever. And Good I remember my, my neighbour, would, would, uh, Pallet Gormley, who passed away recently, he, he, he would often, if he saw me play on my own, he'd often jump the hedge and come in and play, play with me for 10 or 15 minutes. And <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that, that was it. Yeah. Yeah, so sport was, I was always playing something, you know, yeah. I was always doing something. Any, any inspirations or role models you were looking up to as a young lad? Um, well, I suppose when I got interested in it, my dad would have brought me to Cullen mm. Kill matches and they won the, Cullen Kill won the Intermediate Championship, I think it was 1986. And um, so I kind of grew up on that team first. Yeah. Um, and then you know, the likes of Cahill Lee and Ali McGarn and um, Creeping Smith and Barney Smith and yeah, uh, Desi McCabe and you had um, uh, Richie Colhan was playing with Colum Kill and the McEwan brothers and all these guys. So um, I I enjoyed watching them play and so and then I went when I went to Mel's, well. It was, there was sport everywhere in Mel's, you know, and football was huge. Yeah, absolutely. And for the five years I was in Mel's, uh, they won the All Ireland once and, and four four Leinsters. So it was it was success all the way. So you were looking up to these, yeah, these guys, you know, Enda Flynn and uh, Paul Victory and Paul Levy and Dermot Riley and all these guys who were on Mel's teams, you know, winning All Irelands. Park Farrell from from Ballinlee. Yeah. So um, it's great to have that ahead of you, isn't it? It's great to have like to see to see success as a young player. It's a it's a great uh, it's a great drive. Oh, it is. It drives you on. It it, it gives you the the drive to to be want to be part of something similar. You know. Mm, yeah. And who who was responsible for turning Gavin Turner into a goalkeeper? Um, that would have been well. I would have played all the way up. Up as far as minor and under twenty one, I would have played in the forward line. Or all played, always played a half forward. Okay. And um, I would have made my senior debut for Colm Kill, you know, outfield before I before I ended up in goals. For, uh, Eugene McGee was in, Eugene was in charge of the team, and Jackie Flanagan, who was um, oh yeah, Jack. our underage coach, all the way up, you know, and Jackie would have, would have been our coach at up school boys and on the 14 level. I'm sure he's a big influence on you as well, Jackie. Uh, Jackie and, and my father as well was involved mm. with school boy teams and then Dan Mulligan as well would have been, you know, from under 14 up to minor yeah. and they were big influences. Uh, but I think Jackie would have said it to Eugene McGee. You see, I used to take the freeze off the ground for, okay. for, the, for the underage teams. I would, I would take the freeze. So I think Jackie told Eugene that I had a decent kick off the ground. And um, so in those days, you played the you played the senior game, and then afterwards, your second string would play the same team in a in yeah. a second string game. So I used to I would be a sub on the senior team, and I might get on outfield, and then I'd play in goals in in the next match. And that's how <laughs> that's how it started. Now I was very reluctant. I didn't I didn't want to be there. Yeah, I was just gonna ask you that. Yeah, how did you feel first? Firstly, oh, I I didn't want to be there. The, he was a half forward, and, and that's, yeah. that's where I wanted to be, and that's where I wanted it, you know. Where I who, to who, who delivered that message to you, Eugene, was it? It, it was never really delivered to me. It just, it just, <laughs> just said, listen, um, you know, Announced. we're going to try, try you out in goals for the, for the junior matches and see how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> no barking out of you at all, no response. <sighs> no. So. No, just head, head down into the goals. Head down, play it. You know. So, and then I just grew into the position, I suppose. Then, and then I kind of, I knew that that this was being mapped out for me. That they wanted me to play in goals for the senior team. So, once I got a bit of experience, yeah. And and um, 
like I suppose it was a good approach by them as well in the sense that you know they got to have a good look at you and goals you know for those second games you know afterwards as well they were able to see yeah. it, see it develop and it was a good it was a good uh, platform to try out. It was, I suppose. Um, it, it was a chance to you know to to get to know the position and to and to and to learn it, I suppose. Um, but yeah, it was it was it was, that, it was the way that did that it happened anyway. And would you, would you put it down to a few like you know? I suppose you, you say after a while you kind of get used to it, but like was there maybe certain moments in games where you have to pull off a few epic saves? And I'm sure there was a great buzz on that. Like, oh, do you know what? I don't mind this position. Um, yeah, I remember we we went to Donegal one time. Um, the club went to Donegal to play. Went for a weekend away, and I just started with the seniors and. And we played St. Eunan's in Letter Kenny and I, and I think I made a few saves in that game and, and felt good about it or whatever. And yeah. And I probably thought to myself, well, look at it, this is probably where I'm going to end up now. You know, if I want to play, this is this is probably my position. So I kinda got used to it then and, and, and just got on with it, you know. Yeah, yeah, I know. And develop I suppose you have to be happy in any position you play, but then, you know, that's not always the case for a lot of lads, but I think it's it's coming to it's kind of like coming to terms with it and doing the best you can in that position because at the end of the day, any position is better than no position. But sometimes yeah. some, the the position of goalkeeper, has, you know, not that it was ever undervalued, but definitely in more recent times, it's just it's it's been realised how important of a position it is and how it's such an attribute to any team to have a, a versatile goalkeeper, you know, an efficient goalkeeper. Well, that's right, yeah. And I, I suppose the way I played it in those days, I played it as I saw it. Mm. And I was an outfield player with a number one in my jersey. And so I, I kind of played the, the game the way I saw it. So I played as kind of as an extra defender, as a sweeper. And, you know, I, I kind of backed up the defenders and made myself available to take the ball and yeah. and um, come out of the goals a good bit and <laughs> take, some, take some chances. But... Um, I just always played it the way I saw it, you know. That that was, and, and I grew grew into the position, and, and and I suppose got confidence from it. You were probably the first goalie in the county to start that. Um, I probably was, yeah. Because I think like it's, it's something you took on yourself. Like it's definitely been there's been lots, lots since now who, who do it, and it's 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 a more common part of the game now. But yeah, was there <laughs> the first time you tried it? Was there anyone? Did you get an eaten or anything or? Ah, yeah, like it, it, it didn't go down well too often. But I mean, I, the way I was playing was, I was just playing the game the way I saw yeah. it and, and the way I thought. That made sense. Know, it it made sense to me. Why am I just standing in here? You know, I've got to make my get involved in the game and try and try and affect the game best yeah, they can. Create an extra man for a defender as well if they're in trouble. Like create that. the extra man, and invariably, you know, the the hairy scary stuff usually happened in the second half of games when we'd be chasing the game. Yeah. You know, and I, and I take more chances. And like when you're chasing the game, you have to take chances, you know. Yeah, of course. But, like you're, you're, you know, it's, it's a tricky one because when you're coming out, like you could do 10 great things, come out, support the defender, play one, two, you know, carry the ball out, take pressure off your defence, and then you could just be caught once. And yeah. It's, an, it's enough to stick you back to the line again. <laughs> oh, it is, it is. And I, I, I can remember two occasions where, where we got caught. Once was in, was in Emmett Park. And we were playing Kilo in a league game, and I gave a hand pass to Gary Martin and went for the return. The return didn't come back to me, but <laughs> I was gone. <laughs> so I think Aidan Kyo rolled the ball into an empty net. And then, I was just about to ask you who punished. <laughs> I think it was Aidan Kyo. I can't really remember. And the other occasion, I think, was um, a group stage championship game against Tungish in Tungish. And the same thing happened. I, I gave the pass, went for the return. It didn't come. And uh, Davy Barden rolled it in. <laughs> so uh, it, it didn't happen too, happen too often. Yeah. But, but, you know, I suppose my thinking on it was that if I could affect change the other end of the field or if I could get a, a counter-attack started and, and if we could get, get a score up the other end, you know, it was worth doing if we, if we weren't going to get punished too often, you know. Yeah, exactly. And sometimes it'd be interesting to see what the return was, you know, from maybe a goalkeeper being involved in the play or setting up play from the defence, you know, it wouldn't really be something that's recorded too often or looked into. 
Probably not. Oh, Probably no, not. But no, yeah, it would be interesting, interesting to look at it. Yeah. So, like, you were developing, Gavin, and you were obviously your your name was it was spreading out. Look at this. This lad is you know a serious goalkeeper. Like, and at what point then did it reach the, the county stage, or who was responsible for bringing you on to the county panel? Um, it was Eamon Coleman and, and Desi Dolan a senior's time um, which would have been in the winter of 95 95 and who was goalie at that time for Lanford when you were coming in uh, so Brian Green was, was the keeper at the time ok and I think Tommy Gallagher from oh, yeah, yeah. Edgerstown would have been in there as well and Tommy Farrell from Ratline before that or around that so so it was those three uh, goalkeepers were, were there so Brian Brian Green from Arda would have been would have been uh, the number one at the time ok yeah yeah. Uh, and Kamir how was that like how was that experience being called in like you know was it oh, pos- sure. positive one from the start were you met welcome was it take a while to settle in Um. well I, I came I suppose I started off at the same time as Enda Ledwith and um, Niall Sheridan, uh, Brenda Donahue from um, from Sean Connolly's, uh, Podgy from Jumlish and um, Great Clark and Tre- Trevor Trevor Smith. Yeah. So we all we kind of started off together. So we we were the young group, but I was a good few years older than all. And them lads were all, you know, probably eighteen or nineteen. I was in my early twenties at that stage. So I probably had four or five years on most of them. Okay in terms of age but they were all had played um, underage squads with Longford and stuff whereas I had I had never been part of a, a, an inter-county squad at all so it was, it was completely new for me but it was it was very enjoyable and I remember those early um, those early squads uh, you know Frank McNamee and Desi yeah, Barry yeah. and Mickey Harkins and Nicholas Farr from Arda and Liam Belton um, uh, so they they were the guys, you know. Yeah. Kieran Fox from uh, Sean Connolly's, Park Farrell obviously as well. So these were kind of guys I looked up to, you know. Mm. Yeah, it's uh, brilliant to get in amongst them and get playing with them. Oh, it was brilliant, yeah, and, and you were made feel welcome and made feel part of it. And uh, uh, the first year ninety five, uh, again the, the the three games before Christmas. Um, I got a chance very early because I think Brian Green got got an injury, so I made my debut down in Kilkenny. <laughs> okay. And uh, I played again the following day against Offaly in Pierce Park, and we won that one as well. And then I remember we played Westmead in the Auburn Cup in January, and I I was suffering from a flu all week, and Eamon said to me, "Listen, if you're not right, don't play because if if you mess up, you're gone." <laughs> <laughs> You know, but um, yeah. I shouldn't have played. I was stuck to the ground, and we lost the game. And Brian got back in for the rest for the rest of uh, the campaign. So I got a chance very early and very quickly. Mm. But I didn't manage to hold on to it. And, and Brian played the championship in '96, which was against Wicklow, and we lost by a point. But I, it was an encouraging performance because I think the five or six previous years Longford had been badly beaten in the Leinster championship. Yeah, there was, there was so, a, bad, a bad run there, yeah. Difficult it was run. a bad run, and even though it was another defeat, it was a one-point defeat, and I suppose the young players, you know, Podgy and I think Niall started, I think Trevor came on, and yeah. Ender, yeah. Ender probably started that one as well. And So the young players were kind of coming in and making an impact. So it was great to see. It just goes to show the importance when you inject a bit of youth into any squad. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Mm. And then we were on to 97, and... Uh, that was the I made my championship debut in ninety seven against Offaly and um it, it was back to the Beatons again. We got an awful hammer, but they went on to win the they went on to win the Leinster that year. Yeah, very yeah. strong. They went on to win the Leinster, so they were very strong. So um, when, you, so when you first came on, Gavin, then like was there like uh, Brian Green was there and yourself, was there another goalie in the squad? No, not at the time. Um, so you would have been. You would have been when you come in. When you come in first, you would have been say number two. Yeah, it would have been. Yeah. Mm. And yeah, you know, it, it's 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 something I've always been curious about. You know, when you see, you know, the number like on, for some years there in county squads, you can see there's three goalkeepers. 
That's right, yeah. And you have, you know, you'll have your, you know, and they're all competing for one position. And the thing about a goalkeeping position is longevity, you know, and like you look at, you know, he looked like a Cluxton there the length of time he's playing with Dublin, just using him as an example. Yes. And, you know, he's still playing and he's still, you know, in peak condition. And I suppose it it is a position that, you know, it's not going to be as demanding on the body as, as outfield. So there's probably more scope there to play on you know, and play you know, on into your latter years, you know, because obviously yes. the trend is modified and everything. But I suppose, like, when you when you were coming on as a young lad there and you got your chance, um, like, how was that relationship then between you and Brian? Like, was there a mutual understanding there or was it? Because I'm sure it was perfectly normal back in the day for, for there to be rivalry and competitiveness. Like, how yeah. was that situation for you? Like, was it a, a comfortable transition? Was it a difficult one? Well, I suppose um, initially I was just glad to be to yeah. be in the squad, you know. And I never, I had never really thought about being good enough ever to to play at that level, you know. Mm. So, so initially I was just delighted to be in there. And if I got a game, I got a game. I, I you know, <laughs> yeah, I wasn't really pushing, pushing, pushing. But I got a chance earlier on, and then, I, and then, and then when you get a chance and you lose, you lose your chance. You 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 miss out again. Yeah, it kind it kind of wants you to. Once you lose out, you want to get back in. Yeah, and you, and, you, and you want to be back in there again. So yeah, there was there was there's always that little bit of competition, you know, between the the goalkeepers in the squad, especially if there's very little between them, you know. Yeah, it's and, hard, it, it's a difficult one because I've seen I've seen with lads like over the years, you know, fellas, you have quality keepers and they drop off because they just don't see the number one spot being moved they don't see there's no they kind of see there's no point because they're not going to get that's the way they feel like they're not going to get in and I'm just so I'm just yeah. curious, curious to get your take on what is the solution to that like you know because it can't be a black and white situation like okay fair enough you have you might have the fella in number one spot is the top keeper but that's not to say that the fella in number two isn't a top keeper either but how do you how do you get to see that or how do you get to see yeah. that you know it's yeah I suppose I suppose the only way you can get to see it and, and is rotation really mm. and um, not too many are going to do that unfortunately not too many do it I remember Tyrone did it a few years ago with yeah. Pat McConnell and, and Divine remember That's they right. did it yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but Dennis did it as well with, with myself and Damien especially as I got on and I started to pick up injuries mm. um, Dennis did it in a burn cup matches a good few times, you know. Yeah. We play every other game and stuff like that, and then sometimes in league games he do it. And was that hard to get used to, Gavin? Like, you know, it's, I suppose you could probably look back at it now and go, "Oh yeah, well, well, you know, I suppose again it's communication. If that's communicated properly, then you go, oh, that's a hundred percent.' You know, once we're both valued the same way, and yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, I mean, that's not undermined. You know, that sort of way. Yeah, I mean, you always want to play all the games and, and you want to be selfish and play, but but you have to look at the bigger picture as well. And and the manager is also looking at the bigger picture. Yeah, of course. And he probably looks at one and says, well, this guy is, you know, he's he's, he's not getting any younger. So, mm. you know, the guy behind him is going to need some experience. You know, once he's, you can't just throw him in at the deep end. So he's going to need a bit, a bit of experience. You've, you got to look at it from every every point of view. You know, yeah. you can't be selfish all the way in. You got to look at the bigger picture. Yeah, and and it's 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 difficult because as you were saying, if you you know at the time you you weren't feeling well that week, and Brian got back in again afterwards, Brian Green, and like a goalkeeper could make a mistake in the game, and he could be dropped, and he could be outstanding in training, but it is it's it's not worth anything unless it's seen in the game. Unfortunately, you know you could you could redeem yourself afterwards in training. That's right, you could. Yeah. It's it's just it's. Especially, you know, out the field, you can impress. I find you, you could impress and train, and you could be in with a shout to start and the weekend or the following week. But with goalkeepers, like, you have to perform on the stage nearly. You know, you have to be yeah. in the game. That's it. And I suppose when, you, when, you're in the, when you're in the jersey, you know, you have to, you have to keep performing. Mm. And if you don't keep performing, then, you know, you're, you're going you're gonna to miss out or you're going to keep making mistakes. The guy behind you is going to get a chance and get in, you know. So, yeah, it's, I, I think, like personally, I think it's the one position I, I admire fellas' uh, persistence and their professionalism is 
especially the guys who don't necessarily get the game time, but they're but they're there and they're putting in as much effort and they're they're better than themselves. You know, like when they go back to their clubs, then they're they're top keepers. You know, and I think that it really shows in the local championship. You can yeah. see you can see the fellas because the the laws be in the conversation. Oh God, that fella, you know he. You know, he, he's worth a run with the county. Or, you know, you can see the development in a keeper. Yes. You know, you can see it in, yeah. in every in the kickouts, you know, the short kickouts, the, you know, kind of the aerial ball, being comfortable under the ball, their hands under the ball, positioning. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, that's obviously it's, very, it's beneficial for a, a guy to be in a, in an inter-county squad and, and, and learning from the best and stuff. Mm. And it, it'll, it'll only improve your game, but it's... It, the whole thing is is how patient are you going to be, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was lucky to get a chance very quickly. Um, but I remember Damien, uh, when Damien came in, it, it took him a, f- a few years, so he was very patient. Like Damien took, took, took a few years to get to get chances, you know? Yeah. I know, yeah. But, this is, but he hung in there, you know? And then, and then he had a really long career as well, you know? Yeah, and it pays off, yeah. Yeah. So he was lucky that he started off young, you know. He was probably in there at in nineteen. Yeah, and would you say like, you know, there's, there's always so much scope for improvement. You come in with, when you come in as a goalie, say eighteen, nineteen years of age, like there's so much room for development there, and it's it's just about seeing that, isn't it? And and strengthening your areas. Yeah, that's it. You have a lot to learn. It, mm. It's. Um, it's a what would you say? It's a tough position to play. It can be a lonely position at times, but um, you just keep working on your skills and, and trying to improve them all the time. You know. I remember yeah. when myself and Damien were 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 the two keepers on the panel. We we didn't have um, goalkeeping coaches or anything like that, but we were each other's goalkeeping coach. We we um, we we used to absolutely leather each other with with balls the whole time. Mm. And we'd be doing so much, and Damien used to come up with all these little different drills and stuff. And, yeah, yeah. Um, we were forever testing each other out. You know, we didn't always do all the the run and the rest of the boys were doing, but we did a good bit of it. But we always got a little bit of time to head off on our on our own as well. You got to escape some of the run and so. We did, yeah, but, but we worked <laughs> very hard. We yeah, worked. oh yeah, it's intense bouts. And goalkeeping training is it can be tough. It can be really tough, you know. Can you, t- you tell any lads uh, like be hitting the ground and getting up there for, you know, how many times in, in during yeah. transition shirts, you'd be busted. You would. Would, like, would, would, would there have been that? You know, well, back then, don't be as much now. But back back then, would there have been had like you know, you often see a lad running running around the pitch in the group, and he'd have he'd be looking over an angry head and him over <laughs> looking over at the goalkeepers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The lads would be running by and then. It's throw you the odd comment like yeah, exactly as if it's your fault like <laughs> 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 need someone they, to blame <laughs> they'd be busting themselves and, and you know but we we knew ourselves sh- we, we were bursting ourselves as well it's just a different type of training it's a different type of of, of um, intensity you know oh absolutely yeah yeah completely it's all, it's, uh, sometimes you'd like to say here here lads hop in for a few minutes have a go yourselves <laughs> <laughs> and I think you'd wind them up even more of a saying great stuff lads keep her going <laughs> but yeah no, it's a different type of intensity but yeah and okay, yeah. yeah it's a specialised area and a specialised training you know you, you guys run around and pitch at the group wasn't going to make you better keepers it wasn't no so there was no point in doing it no, it's really. logical yeah yeah, yeah, absolutely. Great, Gavin, thanks. And come here, coach and management, like, was this something you always talk about when you were kind of coming here, coming here the latter years or did you take a break for a while? Or No, it never entered my head, Sean. A bit like it never entered my head that, that I was good enough to play at the level that I played. But Why do you think that way, do you think? Uh, well, uh, well, I was always an outfield player, and, uh, mm. you know, so I never, I never figured in, in, in any... Did your com- did your if you don't mind me asking, but did your confidence take a hit when you were asked to move from forward line to goals? Um, I don't know. What was, did my confidence take a hit? Probably, probably just I didn't want to be in there. I just yeah. It was ah, what's this about? Like, why why are they sending me in here? Mm. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't say my confidence took a hit, but I just didn't want to be in there. But. Yeah. But but then I accepted it and moved on. So maybe I wasn't maybe I wasn't good. Maybe they were just telling me I wasn't good enough to be a 
a senior player out out the field. <laughs> well, although I'm, I'm I'm not saying that. I'm just saying you know because like like attitudes have changed dramatically. Like you know it's mm. you know now now it's about you know as I said it's such a specialized position and even. Like back then, it would have been quite normal for like any of us would have been the same. If we're going into goals, like automatically, you think the first thing, oh well, I mustn't be doing something right out the field. But that's not mm-hmm. the case. That's not the case at all. It's just, I think it's how these things are communicated is is important. You know, if you're yeah, you know, well, like, I knew like, I knew the reason they were yeah. Colin Hill were sending me in there was because of my strike off the ground, and, and so there was no mm-hmm. tease in those days. So you had to take the kick out off the ground, and yeah. And so I knew that's why why I ended up in there, you know. Yeah, but uh, it just took a while to accept it, you know. <laughs> yeah, the reason, oh, the reason I ask is like I've seen it. I've seen him at our own club, like the lads moved and strange, and you know, like, sometimes it doesn't don't, it doesn't go down well. Like you know, they don't react well. Yeah, and it's hard for them to see, you know, because you said they don't want to be in there. But yeah, I had, uh, the amount of people that were delighted that switch came about in your case. Ah, yeah, look at it. You know, I suppose the way I look at it now is that you know I I wouldn't be if I stayed outfield or if I if I did play outfield at, at senior level. You know, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have had a, an inter county career. So I'm grateful for the opportunity then that, that yeah. I got from from him and from uh, Desi Dolan uh, to to ask me to be involved in a, in an inter county squad and and you know I wouldn't have had the the career that I had. Wouldn't have had all that enjoyment and meeting up with lads from other clubs, and you know I never had that before, and so, so I'm grateful for the that it ended up that way, you know. If you yeah. Know what I mean. Oh yeah, no, I appreciate, it. And, and like that, that's why I asked. I'm not saying like, oh, your confidence should have taken the hit. I just mean that that can be the impact it can have on some lads, you know, because they're just looking at it the wrong way. Oh, it could. You know, yeah. I suppose I just got on with it, Sean, and and, and mm-hmm. then it turned out well for me, you know. Absolutely, more than turned out well here. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. So look, it's come back, and then the the co- the coach and management. You hadn't thought about that at all, like. And no, I hadn't really. So what was what was your first coaching position? Um. So I suppose when he finished playing in in two thousand nine, I the first year I took took a year completely out, and I did absolutely nothing. Did you enjoy and that? Then, uh, oh yeah, it was it was it was great, you know, because mm. by the time you finished, I was. I needed to break, you know. I needed a break. And when when you um, when you took that break, uh, did you find yourself going away from the game, or did you kind of stay in touch with it? Or? I I pretty much went away from it altogether, you mm-hmm. know, and kind of just stayed in touch with it uh, in terms of you know um, social media or newspapers, yeah. or TV or whatever. I didn't go to many games, club or county. You know, I just completely. Yeah. I made a clean break, but it was a conscious break. I said, "That was that's my part. That's that part of my life done. You know, finished with." Mm. And um, I have other things to look forward to now. So, um, yeah. you know, I put so much such time into it that I said, "Right, clean break and get away from it." You know. Yeah, it's understandable. Yeah. So yeah. I got you back in. Well, <laughs> um, I was asked to be a selector with Colin Kill the following year. Okay. Uh, so Tony McKernan, who would be Colin Kilman living in Killashee, took over the senior team that year, I think in 11. And he approached me and asked me to be a selector. So I agreed. And uh, I enjoyed it that year. I really enjoyed it, especially the championship games, you know. Mm. Um, um, and then at the end of the season, um, at the end of the season, Tony left and I took the team for the last few league games. And then I also took the under twenty ones, and that's possibly what kept me involved, and because I really enjoyed doing the under twenty ones then. Uh, so taking a young group, and I I did about four years with them. Brilliant. Yeah, understandable. So, and I think uh, the following year, Danny Brady took over. I'm not sure of the dates and that, but mm. I stayed on as a selector with Danny and 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 did that as well, and then. Um, I stayed with Cullen Kill. Uh, I, I took a step away from the senior setup, and I, I stayed involved with the under twenty one setup. Good man. And we good. did that for we did that for four years, and, and eventually got some success, and we had some great battles with Kilo. Yeah, it was Kilo you beaten that fifteen, wasn't it? It was. And, was it? Kilo had beaten us in fourteen, and Kilo beat us in the semi final of sixteen. So in the three years, it, it was 
Yeah. It was either one or the other, you know. But uh, a, a, a lot of that cra- a lot of that crap now with Colin Gill seniors, aren't they? They are, yeah, yeah. they are absolutely, yeah. and uh, enjoy watching them play and seeing mm. them seeing them develop. Um, but they uh, when Tony was in charge of Colin Kill, that group was uh, they were minors. Um, okay. I think they won a minor B championship, so they they made great great progress and, and great. Um, over the years, you know, brilliant. And, uh, yourself. Be, That's some stint there. Four years, like, is is a lot to give to, um, you know, a lot to give back to the club. Fair play. Ah, well, it was at the end. It was always a, a short. The under twenty one competition was a short competition. Yeah, it's a bad you time know, of the year for it, really, isn't it? Too? And a bad time of the year, but um, we took it seriously and we made a good stab at it every year. And the first year, I think, Mullen to beat us in a in a B semi final. And the the second year we got to the final, and we I remember we were involved in a round robin of games. We ended up with a huge amount of games in a short period of time. And by the time we got to the final, the lads were wrecked. (laughs) We didn't perform, but we performed then in in fifteen, performed Mm -hmm. well, and then sixteen, Kilo beat us again in the semi final. Another very good game played up in Colin Kill. Nice to have silver to mark up, to mark all the effort. Too. I was, I was delighted for the lads, you know. Yeah. Um, because I remember the Colin Kill won three in a row under twenty ones in the early two thousands, and that was the that was the launch pad for that. I suppose that oh eight team that won. Okay. Won a, won a senior championship, so you know this this current group that are there now and they're, you know, they're getting close, and hopefully they can. They can bring another senior championship to Colin Kill. Good stuff. Good stuff. What's your greatest sporting achievement to date? Um, well, I suppose if I can put a couple in here, and I, I can't really decide between any of them. <laughs> um, a good, uh, club County? Club and County, yeah. The, I suppose the obvious ones are the, yeah. the Barn, Barn Cup in 2000. Great time. We've talked about it already. <laughs> Uh, the senior championship of Colin Kill in 08. Um, we, were, we were waiting 50 years mm. to win it. It was a massive moment, yeah. And, you know, we lost We lost the final in 94. Um, then we lost another one in 07 to Dramard. And so to finally, to, finally um, to get one was brilliant. Yeah. And then the other one was, I suppose, when we got promotion to Division 1. Uh, with Longford, so it would have been, I think, oh three, two thousand three, and we were a long time trying to get the promotion, and we had a few near misses and a few uh, failures on the last day of the league campaign, and uh, we we played Ballymahan, we played Derry in Ballymahan on the la- in the last game of um, to get, and, and they were going for promotion, and so were we, so only one of us could get it, and. Um, I remember that game very well. James E. Martin scored 1 5. Did you, know, did you save a penalty in that game? Um, the penalty went wide. I didn't save it. <laughs> Paddy Bradley took it. I dived the right way, but it went wide. Okay. You're not claiming a fingertip or anything, no? No, no. <laughs> I did have a good game that day, all right. Um, and Derry laid siege to our goal at times, but we, we held out. Um, James, I remember James, he scored 1 5 and he got sent off and he. The whole crowd rose to applaud him. <laughs> never, never saw it before. A man got sent off, and, and it, it was applauded off. <laughs> he done it all in the one game. He had it. He had it done. But yeah, it was a great, and there was a great sense of achievement, Sean, after doing that because we've been trying for years to do it. Yeah. And to finally get up to, you know, to get up to Division One the following year. Yeah, it was, brilliant. A, it was a brilliant achievement. Yeah, it's brilliant. Yeah, and it's brilliant even to see. Um, I mean, you mentioned the Burn Cup as well. It's, it was great, you know. It's great to see you involved with Podgy and the lads there this year too. After winning it yourselves, you know. Yeah, I suppose it's 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 come full circle for us and mm. um, Don and Podgy and Paul yeah. and myself, you know. So, um, it was it's really enjoyable to be involved again. Fantastic. That's it. Delighted, delighted yeah. to be uh, to be involved. And my part is small, but it's still it's it's brilliant to be there and to be. To be involved with the with the lads and, and I'm just uh, looking for sure 
I speak for the lads when I, when I say that it's not it's not small when you have lads like that coming in and, and like yourself coming in and working with guys like that really appreciate it you know and bringing your experiences. Ah well, we're in a privileged position to be to to be in charge of 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 the fortunes of the county team and and mm. uh, and uh, it's it's great you get to work with the best players in the county and and they're, they're so eager and I love um, seeing the the eagerness of the younger players it's brilliant you know. Yeah. But it's brilliant to be involved in, um, and the match day when you get to match day the same same, same buzz, buzz is there yeah. the, the matches you know the same excitement is there except you, you can't you can't go in and play this time but still it's 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 really exciting to be involved you know yeah that's a tough part isn't it ah, never, yeah, you'll never you'll leave never you replace, you'll never replace the playing but I suppose it's, it's the next best thing isn't it yeah absolutely absolutely yeah, yeah. how would Gavin Tunner like to be remembered um, I suppose just f- from from teammates that you played with, I suppose as as a um, as a good teammate, um, a good friend, um, someone who always did his best, some someone um, who did his best in in training and in in matches, and and someone that could be relied on. You know, that's mm. that's probably that's probably it, Sean. You know, perfect, Gavin. Thank you. I think we're oh, we're on your on the spot. It's great stuff. Okay. Okay. Um, who was that one defender that never did what he was told for club and county? Now this is coming from your perspective. You know, you're shouting, yeah. I'd, I'd imagine you were shouting instructions or trying to get that into position. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's a tricky one, Sean. That's the one I never. <laughs> I, I couldn't think of anyone, you know, offhand. Yeah, I would be. Air a fella in front of you saying all oh, your head for not doing what he was told or No, not really. Like I mean oh, that's good. That's a good that's a good, good I, I don't think so, Sean. Nobody nobody jumping out to mind, you know. Um, that's that's positive. <laughs> I remember I used to be roaring at, you know especially the full back you'd be you'd be roaring at the full back left and right and telling them which way to go and Liam Belton used to ro- turn around and have a roar back at me every now and again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah I, no, no, I was, nobody, nobody was nobody was nobody I, I can't remember anyone now that that didn't do what I was telling them to do I, th- I think they liked having a bit having so, a pair of eyes behind them yeah some lads some, some lads yeah yeah, I, yeah so. no, I, was, I was just curious because you know it goes on a lot and I'm sure sometimes you, you shout an instruction and you get the fella give you the tongue back as if he understands but then he does a completely opposite thing <laughs> yeah, well, you you would have a lot of defenders. Like no matter how, how much you roll, I can't think of of who they were. No, well, probably now later on this evening you go, oh sure, geez, there are several. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I tell you later on, yeah, I will. But you would you would have defenders who were so concentrated on what they were doing. Yeah, uh, I don't think they would have even heard me shouting at them. You know? Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. yeah. So they were really tuned into what they were doing, and it didn't matter what anyone was saying. Where else on the field? That they were tuned into what they were doing, and they were just doing it, you know, to the best of their ability. Yeah, and so that was really showing for you as well. So that's it. Yeah, yeah. You just knew that they were tuned in, you know. All right, cool. Let's try the next one. Yeah, yeah. Easiest midfielder to hit the ball toward. Um. Well, there's probably a few there, but. There, yeah, go on. Sure, uh, sure um. For different reasons. Well, and the and the Barden used to used to love get. Love getting my kickouts, you know. He he used to say, "Listen, they're coming at a perfect height. They're mm. they're, they're floating in there at a perfect height to me." I, I, he he used to come in and say to me, "Look, there, keep doing that. They're, you know, that's what I want." Yeah, brilliant. So he was a good man. He was able to he was able to command yeah. space there and, and get it. Um, David Hannafy when he played, you know, he just had to put it there anywhere near him, and he had such a leap. Yeah. Um, he was a brilliant fielder of the ball. Um, who else? Uh, Liam Keenan again, big mm-hmm. man, huge big man, and he just used his physicality and got there. He used to get get into position, and, and if he didn't win it, well, then he he generally broke it to a a, a long for man, you know. Yeah, some some joy. You, have, you t- think about like the amount of big men there. You had the choice. You had the hit. It's some yeah, advantage, but- I'm sure, from a goalkeeper's perspective. Oh, it is, yeah, absolutely, yeah. So there's times when you have the ball and you're you're looking up and you're you're going, where am I going to put this one? You know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when, you have a, 
when, when you have a big man there, well, you just say, okay, there's no other option, right? When I hit this man. <laughs> You're never stuck for an outlet, yeah. That's it, yeah. That to be said for still. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you know, yeah. you can go for a change. Great stuff, Gavin. Thanks a million. Uh, fair play to you. That was, that was great. Brilliant. And, you know, thoroughly enjoyed that. And it's, it's, it's a position, you know, it's a position we don't reflect on too often, you know, and the different perspectives. And it's, like from yeah. your from your eyes, they're looking out like there's you know it's it's a whole it's a whole new ball game like you know and there's it's a whole different a whole different area, but um, it is it is Sean yeah it is absolutely um, but uh, but again uh, an enjoyable position if you, if you try and make it your own and, and you get comfortable there and you and you work at it and you pick up bits over the years and you you know yeah it was an enjoyable position and um, I, I I thoroughly enjoyed playing. Playing with Longford and playing with Cullen Kill, I had a good career out of it, you know. She got fantastic ser- uh, service, Gavin. You know, over the years, I'd be number one for for so long, and you know, I I wouldn't have known you personally like really over the years. You know, we chat obviously after games and mm. that. But the one thing that always struck me was your level of professionalism, you know, and that's that's what's definitely rubbed off on the keepers that came after you, you know that. To come into any squad and to see somebody like yourself ahead, just showing the way and leading by example in every area, in every area of your position, you know, it's uh, it's so important. Like so, you know, fair so, f- fair play to you because you paved the way for the rest of the lads. Yeah, well, Longford have been lucky with goalkeepers in the last few years. You know, Damien came in after myself, and and then Paddy has come in after that, and Pat Farrell is a, is a backup keeper there at the moment, and great great keeper as well, and. Dahi Mulvihill is there as well. And, yeah, and the effort yeah, these lads put in, like, you know, it's... Yeah, and then, and then there's other goalkeepers playing with, with, with club teams who are good enough to be there as well. And, and you know, there's, top keepers, there's yeah. really some top keepers around, you know. Yeah, and but they're, they're, just, they're, they're putting so much into their game, you know, you can see it in the, in the quality of goalkeeping in the county. It's great to see, like, you know, that it's... Yeah. You know, it's a position, you can see it clearly on most... There's very few club teams now that don't have top man and goals, like, you know. Well, it's it's become over the years um, a massively important position, and I suppose Stephen Cluxton is the, is the reason for that. You know, mm, yeah, um, he he's the goalkeeper that kind of changed everything, and um, teams realised that it was so important to have a guy there that could ping it, you know, and they could pick out a man in 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 a, in a, a small space, or that was able to pick out a man under pressure, or you know, so yeah. the, the kicking the the possession game became so important. Exactly, that, yeah. Uh, that a goalkeeper just didn't have to save the shots. He he had to he had to be good under every high balls, and he had to. But he also had to have a kicking game, and the kicking game became very important. Mm, true, and uh, so and then when he started taking hitting the forty fives as well, he opened the can of worms up here. That's right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, Do you have a crack yeah. at them too often? Yeah, I had a crack at a few. Mm. Um, I remember, I remember hitting one in the county final in 2007 and then missing an easy one a few minutes later to, to try and equalise the game. Um, I didn't take that many for, for Longford. Um, I remember coming up to take one in, in the Burn Cup quarterfinal against Dublin and Podgy came running out. <laughs> and uh, he said, just give it to me and I chipped it up to him and he put it over the <laughs> Lovely bit of improvisation. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I, I took, I, there was one stage I took a few penalties as well. Um, took a penalty against Westmead and then took one against London a, a few weeks later. And That's then right. I remember taking them against Granard in the championship and missing them, you know. So <laughs> some days they go in and some days they don't. Again, it's like, you know, if, if a keeper comes out and an outfield player could miss three forty fives, but a keeper misses one, get back into the goals, you're not, you're not taking another one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you know, it's, it's funny too, isn't it? Like, yeah, you, should, you shouldn't be there. So what are you doing there? <laughs> exactly, exactly, yeah. That's, that's, a, that's a pod you could have shot with you that time when he was coming out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, all fun and games. And, yeah. yeah, exactly. It was all good while, while we were doing it, Sean, you know. Gavin, thanks very much. It was uh, brilliant to have you on. Thoroughly enjoyed that now. And No worries, Sean. Thank you. And thank, uh, thanks for all the, the great uh, chats you're having with the different sports people around the county. It's a, it's a great thing that you're doing and um, people are really enjoying listening to them. You know, people, I listen to them in the car myself. And 
I never thought you'd be ringing me asking me to do one, but uh, oh, absolutely. I've, I've, I've been enjoying them all and uh, you're, you're doing, keep it up, you're doing great stuff. Thanks a million, Gavin, it's always great to hear, really appreciate that, buddy. No problem, Sean, no problem. Yep, all the best and hello to all the family, stay safe. You too, Sean, take care. Thanks a million, Gavin. No problem.